earlier this year, Toyota Malaysia introduced the new Vios and we drove it in Langkawi. And uh, back then, uh, Toyota Malaysia had also prepared for our reference a Honda City, but that was the entry level variant. And despite that, we published a video called the lopsided comparison, which was obviously a hint that it was not a fair comparison. Even then, we published a video, it got fair, it got good traction. And a lot of you were saying, hey, this is not a, uh, a fair comparison, even though it was already written in the title that we, it was not a fair comparison. But it's okay, a lot of people do not read, and I'll give you that, doesn't matter. But now, I'm giving you the most fair B-segment comparison against from the Toyota Vios against the Honda City RS. This is the petrol variant, it's not the hybrid. So it does not get fairer than this, guys. It's also one of the most difficult comparisons that I've ever done. Because both of these cars are so evenly matched that I thought it's already difficult for me to come up with a conclusion for this video. What more for you as the buyer? How are you going to decide? Well, right off, you might be thinking that the Vios is the newer one over here and you, you, you'll be right. It's fresh, the design is all new and it's also bigger than ever before. But the Honda City has just been facelifted and it now has all of the features that you've wanted in the previous generation city. So it's basically has been updated, refreshed, and it too is very impressive. So in this video, I'm going to help you decide which one to buy. So hang with me as I show you everything that you need to know about the facelifted Honda City and the all new Toyota Vios. And I hope to help you decide in your purchase decision. So let's start with the powertrains. Powering both the Honda City as well as the Toyota Vios is a 1.5 litre 16 valve Dodge engine with uh, dual VVTi for the uh, Toyota. Then you get your IV tech for your Honda. The Honda though is up on power. So it trumps the Vios when it comes to power. It produces 121 PS and 145 Newton meters of torque. Power is channeled to the front wheels through a conventional CVT gearbox. It does, however, have a higher top speed as well at 195 kilometers per hour. The Vios has 106 PS and 138 Newton meters of torque, but it has a lower top speed of 180 km per hour. However, just like the Honda City, it too channels its uh, power to the front wheels through a conventional CVT gearbox. Both cars also have a 40 litre fuel tank. However, with the four, even with the 40 litre fuel tank, we have researched how much fuel the, both these cars will actually require to travel roughly about 100 km. And I can tell you this, that again, that they are evenly matched. We came here, we are in Sedang today, and we came here from Kota Damansara. The Vios has a fuel efficiency figure of 15.5 uh, kilometers per litre, whereas the Honda has a figure of 16.5 kilometers per litre, which is just roughly about the same, it's just one kilometers difference. Of course, we, what we could do is we could properly test this, get on the highways and such. But right now, getting through traffic, Sedang to here is roughly about 30 kilometers, uh, through traffic, on the highway and such. So that should give you a good enough reading to efficiently conclude that both cars are evenly matched. However, having said that, the city sits lower than the Vios. Even though in terms of sizing, which I'll share with you shortly, the city sits lower, which as we all know, improves the coefficiency of drag. So based on the theory alone, I, would, I can summarize that perhaps, theoretically, the city is somewhat more fuel efficient. But hey, 
the trip computers, the onboard trip computers say something else. And for now, we'll trust that. So if you're considering one of these two cars, I imagine that space must be important for you. Perhaps you're carrying your family and such. Now, let's explore how big these cars are exactly and I'd like to tell you that this is, again, they're equally matched. However, the city is slightly longer and slightly wider. It is also just slightly lower than the Vios. However, the Vios has a wheelbase of, that is 20 millimeters longer than the city. And if you're considering space, if space is important for you, I, I imagine that boot space must be important as well. So let's go check that out. So in terms of boot space, the Vios has 475 liters and you get this mat as well, which I think is optional. Now, on the other hand, the city has a bigger boot space of 519 liters, which translates to 44 liters more boot space than the Vios. The other thing to, that is important to consider is the new Toyota Vios has a fastback design which basically translates to the sloping roof line over here and even though it looks great it however has to sacrifice on head headroom for the back passengers let me demonstrate but before we jump inside i just like to talk about one thing and that's the tire size vios runs on 17 inch tires where else the city runs on 16 inch tires now this is important because over the long run it might be cheaper for you to buy 16 inch tires rather than 17 inch tires so in terms of maintenance the, the city with regards to the tires might just be cheaper to, to maintain now let's go check out the headroom that i was talking about Joe. now one of the things that many of us motoring journals realized during the drive in Langkawi was that the headroom at the back of the Vios is severely limited because of the fastback design of the new Vios. So this is the sloping roof line that I was talking about. So you can, as you can see, I can barely fit a, one, one palm in between my head and the roof line. Um, of course, I'm about six feet tall, so not really your usual, your usual, your average Malaysian height. But at the same time, it's important to also notice that the window is actually smaller in the Vios, and this lets in lesser light into the cabin, which makes it feel a little bit more claustrophobic. And this roof line over here also is right next to your head, so that too contributes to the claustrophobic feel. But besides that, you get two rear air conditioning vents, you get a type A USB port as well as a type C USB port and you also get a cup holder at the side here which makes life easier. Lah. Now let's go check out the city. In the city though, right off the bat, it feels a lot more spacious in here simply because the roof line is higher than the Vios. The window is also considerably bigger and this lets in more light contributing to the feel of spaciousness inside the cabin. It's also important to note one thing that the recline of the seats is actually more comfortable in the city than in the Vios. So this immediately makes the city feel more spacious and more comfortable than the Vios as far as the back seats go at least. At the back here, you also get bigger rear conditioning vents as well as two Type-C USB ports. And to cap it off, just like the Vios, you also get cup holders, which is important. Now, at the front of the Toyota Vios, in the front seats, well, it's obviously an evolution of the previous uh, Toyota Vios's and if you compare it to those models, it is a really good upgrade. However, I don't know. I do not like the fact that the, the steering wheel, these buttons, the gear knob, all of these controls, the, some of the software, 
are found in the Pearl Duas, specifically the likes of the Maivi, the Alza and such, uh, which is fine in terms of cost savings for the company, but the Vios is nearly double in price. So I would like some exclusivity. And you know, this is a Toyota. I do not want to be sharing parts with a Perudua, with no disrespect to Perudua, but I would like some exclusivity. So that's one thing that I wish would have been more exclusive in the Vios. Spending more money anyway, right? The other thing that is important to note in here is this center console is actually placed quite high up, which means this leg tunnel you're over here, as well as your knee space, feels smaller. So you can't really sit comfortably as compared to the city, which I will demonstrate shortly. But having said that, you get a 7-inch TFT screen over here, fully digital meter panel. You also get an 8-inch infotainment system over here, complete with wireless uh, Apple CarPlay as well as Android Auto. Before we jump into the city though, I would like you to keep in mind the way the seats of the Vios looks because this is going to take me to my next point in the city. Let's go. First things first, aircon. Now, check out the seats. Okay, this is what I wanted to tell you. The seats in the city are not only more comfortable, but they feel plush. They're more softer, and in that sense, more comfortable as well. And the other thing is, check out my, the sitting position. Because the center console is lower, this is important. A lot of people do not pay attention to this because, hey, it's no big deal. But this is what you will notice in a car-to-car -car comparison. The center console being lower automatically gives you more space. Look at my sitting position as compared to the one in the Vios. It feels more spacious. In that sense, immediately you feel more comfortable as compared to the Vios. The other thing is, it's important to note that you also get a 7-inch digital display over here which is part analog and part digital. The dig digital part gives you all the essential readings such as your fuel consumption, um, basically everything else. It gives you further controls over the onboard computer. You get a smaller touch infotainment over here. This is 7 inches as compared to the 8 inches in the Vios. Now, despite that, just one inch does not make a lot of difference. You do, however, feel that the overall quality in here, mm, I know this is subjective, it's based on feel, but I like these dials. Mm. This makes it feel very, a little bit more upmarket. This reminds me of old BMWs um, of the early, 20, uh, early 2000s and such. So in that sense, I generally like the interior of the Honda City simply because it's more spacious. You get all of the infotainment stuff in here. You do, oh, it's important to note, you, get, you also get eight speakers in here as compared to six speakers in the Vios. So if sound quality is important for you, then you will get more speakers inside the city. Besides that though, hey, it's pretty much down to your choice actually. For me, spaciousness matters, which I get in the city. Comfort matters, which I get in the city. I definitely like the seats of the city better, which makes long distance driving even more uh, tolerable. And generally, everything I think feels better than in the, city, in the Vios. So inside the Vios, when you first get inside the Vios, I think the overall design will capture you. And that is one thing that I would like to say about this video. It's not about showing you which is worse than the other or which car is bad and such. Because there's, there's no such thing between these two cars. I don't think there is a bad car. It's just one is better than the other. So inside here, I think you will like the overall quality of things. The soft touch leather around the dashboard, the stitching. It looks and feels good. It's just that, personally, I prefer the interior of the uh, Honda City. But on that note, since we're sitting uh, in the Toyota Vios, 
I would like to point out that it comes with impressive safety systems. On that note, it comes with uh, six airbags, it comes with, oh, uh, you get dual front airbags, side airbags, side curtain airbags. Uh, on the safety front, you also get things like vehicle stability control systems, ABS, electronic brake force distribution, brake assist, auto brake hold. You also get hill start assist, blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic alert, and you get the complete Toyota safety sense, which includes pre-collision system, lane departure warning, lane departure prevention, front departure alert, lane keep control, auto high beam, adaptive cruise control. On that note, I again, I'm happy to tell you that both cars are again pretty evenly matched. Now, even in terms of suspension, McPherson struts up front and torsion beam at the back, which again, both cars share the same. And in terms of driving quality, let me get out here. Both cars again are evenly matched as well. However, however, the handling of the Vios is different than the handling of the Honda City. The Vios feels a little bit muted, a little bit watered down. You know, you don't really know what's going, you just stir. You wherever you want to go, you just stare. That's it. Steering wheel, yeah, it just has good weight to it. But it's not a very lively, it doesn't have very lively handling. And even in terms of acceleration, yeah, it makes a lot of noise, but you're not really going anywhere very fast. Now this is a good corner. You get quite a bit of body roll. And the overall quality, handling quality is muted, I would say. It's just that it's point and steer wherever you want to go. So it's nothing really fantastic in that sense, which to some might be okay. But if you want a car that feels agile, and feels alive, then perhaps this might not be the car for you. Also, at about 100 kilometers per hour right now, you get a lot of wind noise because these A-pillars are so steeply raked that around here, you get quite a lot of wind noise that is intruding back into the cabin. Even tyre noise, yeah, tyre noise is acceptable. It does run on Continentals, which can be run on Continental tyres, I mean. So it can be a little bit noisier. But in that aspect, I think that is to be expected. I do think that the city would, would fare better than the Vios in this aspect. So let's go see how the city feels. Now, inside the city, it immediately feels more airy, more spacious, more... Um, yeah, it just feels more comfortable. I like the fact that there's so much light in here. It makes it feel nice, just to put it simply. Feels a lot nicer than in the Vios. Of course, it feels a little bit dated as well. I have to put it out there because this design, this dashboard has been around for a while already. Of course, it has been uh, updated over the years, but besides all of that, it feels good. Um, earlier on, I did say that this is a seven inch screen. Actually, it's not. It's actually an eight inch screen and the, v the one in the Vios is a nine inch screen, but still, the point remains the same. There's just one inch different. Eight inches is still huge. It's still nice. I mean, it's it's a big screen. It shows you everything. It comes with wireless, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. There's no complaints. And in terms of safety systems, they are quite evenly matched as well. 
You again, you get six airbags, you get vehicle stability assist, the same ABS, electronic brake force distribution, brake assist. Uh, you also get auto brake hold, but not in the petrol versions. In the petrol versions, you get you still get a manual handbrake. Uh, where else in the hybrid, the EHEV, you get a electronic handbrake, which is what you need to have auto brake hold. Um, and then you also get hill start assist, you get uh, a reverse camera. That's one thing that's different from the Vios. You get a 360 camera, which is, you can live without it. Uh, Honda Lane Watch. Now, this is interesting. This is basically uh, a different system than blind spot monitoring. So whenever you put your left signal on, it shows you what's on your left hand side. So this is, uh, this is also great, especially when it's raining or when it's dark. So sometimes motorcyclists are in your blind spot so with that you are able to see what exactly is on your left now the Vios has its Toyota safety sense where else in the Honda you get the Honda sensing which includes systems such as forward collision warning collision mitigation braking system uh, lane keep assist lane departure warning road departure mitigation adaptive cruise control one of my favorites um, and then you also get auto high beam lead car departure notification and you also get the Honda Connect system which is basically an application which I'll shoot a different video for. Now on the move, now this is where the Honda completely comes into its zone because immediately the handling of the city feels better, the steering wheel feels lighter and more connected, more direct, which basically results in the car feeling more alive. In the Vios, it feels a little bit dull, watered down. Whereas in the Honda, somehow Honda does handling better. It just feels lighter, more connected, as I said earlier. Now, I'm going to put my foot down. Just like in the Vios, it has, it does make some fancy sounds, but you get places quicker than in the Vios. Of course, you can argue that the Honda has more torque, but it also feels more urgent. Now, I've arrived at the same corner a lot quicker than in the Vios, but it feels more confident. I'm taking the corner faster than I was in the Vios. And what's most important is that... Wow, this is nice. What's most important is that body roll is minimal, where else in the Vios, body roll is more pronounced. And here, it feels more planted. Perhaps because it's actually lower to the ground, not quite sure but besides that it's also just a tad bit quieter in here perhaps because the Honda has a sleeker design the the slope of the a pillar the rake of it is not so extreme it's actually more gentle so it gives it a more slippery design in terms of as far as aerodynamics go so basically that just gives you a quieter interior now the the sound from the air the air turbulence around this area here you could really hear it in the Vios but not so much in the city perhaps it's because of the design of this A pillar over here it does not have to fight um, does not have to fight resistance so much which basically results in a quieter interior as I said I'm doing much faster I'm doing about 120 kilometers per hour right now where else in the Vios I was doing 100 and it was already noisy but in here with the to Toyo tires and basically a sleeker design it's nicer I'm not really raising my voice that much so it's this combination of things that I really like I like the sitting position of the Honda it feels more spacious 
I like the handling of the Honda. Feels more direct, more lighter, more connected. And that's why I think this city, despite its age, of course it's been updated recently with a facelift, which gives it uh, a newer design and more onboard systems such as wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. But besides all of that, I think the city just does the interior packaging better than Toyota does with the Vios. So you see what I mean by they are quite evenly matched? Even in terms of safety systems, they're both pretty much the same. Um, so I have to make a conclusion out of this too. I generally like the City better. I know the Vios is fresher, it's newer, but in terms of pricing, even they're not that far apart also. 99,900 ringgit over here, 95,900 ringgit over there. But uh, with Toyota, if you choose for the uh, after-sales service package or something of that sort, it, it'll set you back a further 3,200 ringgit which basically brings the prices of both these cars up to the same level. Both cars also come with a five-year warranty. Wow, I don't think Malaysians have ever seen such fierce competition in the B segment before. So which means that I have to make a difficult choice and as I said earlier, I prefer the city simply because for me, it feels more spacious, it feels more comfortable, I like uh, the more engaging driving, hand, uh, driving character. It's, I like the handling of the Honda better than on in the Vios. So in that sense, if it was my money, this would be the one that I go for. Let me know what you think in the comment section. And as usual, do consider subscribing.